welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. What do you get when you take a big, thick, heavy baking steel and combine it with a French Debouillet carbon steel frying pan? You get this guy, the new baking steel number 10, 10 inch carbon steel frying pan made in conjunction with Debouillet. Today we got a big in-depth review and cooking feature. Let's get started. Overview. They call this pan a number 10, 10 and a quarter inches wide, a good jack of all trades, all around size for a frying pan. The pan is three millimeters thick. That's a good thick size for a carbon steel. Weighs in at a little over four pounds. And I note that it's sturdy and arrived with no spin or wobble. Now this is a carbon steel skillet. Carbon steel needs to be seasoned, kind of, sort of like cast iron. We'll walk through those steps here in just a few minutes, but they arrive shiny and silvery. Once we get the pan seasoned, it will start to develop a patina. It will darken in. It will never be this shiny and silvery ever again. Now let's take a look at the pan's handle. It's attached with three rivets and importantly, it's made out of stainless steel. This is a big deal. Why? Because stainless steel is oven safe and therefore this pan can be seasoned on the stovetop or in the oven. Now if Debouillet already makes lineups of carbon steel pans and skillets, why does this pan exist? Why would I want to purchase this pan from baking steel? Let's take a look and compare this pan with some of its Debouillet cousins. Here's a carbon steel skillet in the Debouillet Mineral B line. Note that it has a coated handle with a plasticky medallion. That means that handle is not oven safe. Good choice for people with gas cooktops. Not my first choice for people with electric or induction flat tops. However, for those people, I usually recommend the Debouillet Mineral B Professional lineup. In the Professional lineup, you get an oven safe stainless steel handle. This pan is kind of sort of somewhere in the middle. You kind of get the shape of the regular Mineral B strip style handle with the oven safe stainless steel material of the Pro model. Of course, that leads to the question, why should I buy the baking steel? The answer is there is a gap in the lineup. In the regular series of Mineral B, they make a 10 and a quarter inch skillet. In the professional series, they make an eight, nine and a half, 11 and 12, but there is a gap where that 10 and a quarter inch skillet should be. This skillet from baking steel fills that gap. Now currently baking steel only makes this one pan in this one size. Is this a test run? Are they going to expand their partnership with Debouye, produce a full lineup of pans? Don't know yet, but we will be keeping an eye on that. Seasoning. Very simple seasoning directions from Baking Steel here. They send a card with the pan, not as in-depth as that mat for method where you use the potato peels, oil, and salt. All Baking Steel says to do is to wash the pan with a sponge and hot water. They don't mention dish soap. Easy enough for the cleaning. Now let's jump to the seasoning. Now on a gas stove top, all you do is put the pan on a burner. I'm starting out on a medium burner. I've got a quarter to a third of a cup of oil. I'm using grapeseed here. Good choices are grapeseed, veggie, or canola. Start with one of those. Don't try anything exotic early on. Dump that in the pan, wipe it around with paper towels, make sure the sides are coated. Note that you do not have to season the handle. Bring that up to smoking. Then it's searing hot oil, so be careful, but pour that oil out. Then start wiping the pan down with wads of paper towels. Wipe it until it looks almost dry. You don't want too much oil in there. Return the pan to the burner and let it start smoking. And you'll notice that the color starts to change. You can see it happen in real time. Now, if you notice that your pan is starting to color in more on the sides rather than on the cooking surface like this one is here, a lot of times what I'll do is move that pan from a medium burner over to a smaller burner and get a little bit more heat concentrated underneath the cooking surface so that it darkens in as well. And that's all there is to it for a stovetop seasoning. Now let's take a look at seasoning in the oven. Now, if you wanna season the pan in your oven, all you need to do is start with a dry pan, put in a half teaspoon of one of those oils, wipe that oil all around with some paper towels, wipe it until it looks almost dry, then take some new paper towels and wipe it down again. Make sure there are no streaks of oil, no drops of oil. It should look almost dry. Put that pan in your oven at 450 degrees for an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Then turn your oven off, let that pan cool down in your oven. Look at the card that came from Baking Steel. They show a new pan and a seasoned pan. That is not a jet black shiny pan. That pan is brown and blotchy. That is a well seasoned pan. It is ready to cook. 
cook, cook, cook more and worry about your seasoning less. Okay, now let's jump into some of the cooking tests. I've been cooking in this pan a little over a month now and I wanna run through some of the highlights, some of the things I've really learned about the pan. Now when I have a new carbon steel skillet, it always takes me a little while to learn the pan. I have a lot to learn about it. I have to learn which burner it works on the best. I have to learn how much heat to use, how long to preheat the pan. And therefore I start out with things that are kind of easy, kind of everyday food items. Here's what I mean. Here I'm cooking some okra. I give the pan a shake and the okra is sticking just a little bit. Here I'm cooking some potatoes, give the pan a shake and the potatoes are sticking just a little bit. Now, is there anything wrong with the pan? Do I need to touch up the seasoning? No, all I had to do was just learn to heat the pan a little bit longer at a little bit higher heat. Now things like chicken nuggets for my son, more okra, more potatoes, I give the pan a shake and everything slides around. So the more you cook, the more you learn about your pan. And you find that if things are sticking just a little bit, really there's nothing wrong with the pan or the seasoning. You just gotta update your cooking techniques just a little bit. That's okay, I like learning new cooking skills. Now let's go ahead and level up to something a little bit more difficult, eggs, both fried eggs and omelets. These are the very first eggs I've cooked in the pan. I always get a little bit nervous doing this for the first time on camera. In goes the butter, in goes the egg, and boom, it's sliding around. Now admittedly here, I've got the pan a little bit hot. When I flip the eggs, you can see some brown color on there. That's some of that butter browning. Now I've been cooking a bunch more eggs and I've kind of dialed the heat back down until I found a sweet spot. The eggs cook a little more slowly, the whites stay a little more tender, yet the pan is still hot enough so that the eggs don't stick. Omelets are also non-stick. Here I'm doing a little bit of a Western omelet with some ham and cheese, no sticking there. Fantastic pan for eggs. Now how about a big tough test? Beyond Meat Burgers, oh Lord, on an induction burner. Now this induction burner has warped the heck out of other carbon steel pans. You may have seen this on my other videos. Warped the heck out of an 11 and 7 8 inch mapfer. It's now a spinner. Also a nine inch mapfer. It would warp the pan in real time and the pan would return to shape as it cooled. So here we go, I get the pan on the burner. It's actually preheating fairly normally. Some of those other pans, it would just go off to the races, go up to over 500 degrees. It's not doing that with this pan. In goes some oil, in goes Beyond Meat patties. My wife actually walked through and asked if something plastic was burning. Nope, that's just the aroma of Beyond Meat. They fried up nicely. And the most important thing here is there's no warping. The pan is not spinning. It's not spinning while it's on the eye and it doesn't spin when it's cooled down. So I didn't get any warping. And that's a tribute to that three millimeters thick thickness. I think if you have an induction stove, if you have an electric flat top, this pan with that three millimeter thickness is going to be a good choice to minimize any warping concerns. And how those Beyond Meat burgers turn out? Well, this actually seemed to help. How about some pork chops? Here I'm cooking some pork chops. These things are fairly thick. I note that at the 10 inch size, the pan starts to get a little crowded at three pork chops. So if you're gonna cook more than that, you're gonna want a bigger pan. Brown those up nicely on the stove top. And here's where I like that oven safe handle. I moved the pan directly from the stove top to the oven to finish cooking. Got those pork chops out of the pan and notice that there's some sticky bits left in the bottom of the pan. No big deal when you cook proteins in a carbon steel skillet, there are going to be some sticky bits left in the pan. What I did here is just add some butter and some milk and some stock and made a little bit of gravy real quick. I used a whisk in the pan. Now it's a coated whisk, but a whisk nonetheless. Whisked all that around, got all those sticky bits off. The gravy turned out nicely and there was no damage to the seasoning. Now the bacon tart test. Yes, the bacon tart test. This is a tart that uses bacon as its crust. You line the pan with bacon in kind of a pinwheel type fashion. Fill that up with potatoes and cheese and herbs and spices. Fold that bacon back over the top, then bake it in the oven for about three hours. Now this thing's a little bit ridiculous. I like to do this for the videos. Actually, the cardiologist says if I make this thing one more time, he's just gonna start pricing new boats. Now I had made a bacon tart previously for another video in which I used a 10 inch cast iron skillet. That's what the recipe calls for. I wanted to see if you could just simply swap a 10 inch carbon steel skillet for a 10 inch cast iron skillet. Turns out you can't just do that one to one. The cast iron has steeper sides. It has more surface area on the cooking surface surface and it actually holds more ingredients. So I had to kind of dial back the amount of ingredients to get this recipe to fit. I also wanted to use this recipe as an opportunity to test the oven worthiness of that stainless steel handle. 
got the tart made, got it in the oven. It baked in the oven for over three hours at temperature. Took it out and that stainless steel handle performed flawlessly, no damage, it worked just fine. Now when you take the tart out of the oven, it is swimming in bacon grease. Try not to panic here. We pour that bacon grease off. Also, once you get the tart out of the pan, you blot it with paper towels, get some more of that grease off. By no means is this a diet food. It's really, really decadent, but it's not quite as greasy as it looks when you first take it out of the oven. Now, how did it turn out? Well, my wife says I look as happy as a fat guy eating bacon. And here, although the tart turned out deliciously, I'm going to have to say the pan was not nonstick at all in this test. Now, some of this was my fault. In my haste to eat delicious bacon, I forgot to run a spatula underneath the tart before turning it out. But I did get a lot of sticking on the bottom of the pan there and lost some bacon off the bottom of the tart. Some cheese melted out and kind of baked on the surface, kind of fused to the surface for three hours. I had to almost nuke the pan. I got out the chainmail scrubber, I used a sponge, I used dish soap and hot water, scrubbed the heck out of the pan, but really not that big of a deal. All I did was do a maintenance seasoning on the stovetop, less than 10 minutes and my pan was re-seasoned and I can go on about my cooking again. Now besides cooking eggs, the other place in which I really think carbon steel shines is in high temp sears of meat. Here I've got a big, thick, juicy ribeye steak. Beyond Meat people, if you'd like to take a look at this and reconsider, if you want to join our side, we welcome you with open arms. So I've got the pan just screaming hot on my gas stove top. Here, a thicker pan is going to retain more heat energy so that when a big piece of meat like this hits the pan, it can initiate and maintain a sear, whereas a thinner carbon steel skillet might not be able to keep that sear going. Here, the baking steel carbon steel did a great job. I seared this steak for a couple of minutes on each side on the stove top, used my oven thermometer, and again went from stove top to oven to finish cooking the meat. I take mine out when it's about 127 degrees internally, let that thing rest for a few minutes, and that's kind of the way I like my steak. Everybody has their own preference. But absolutely delicious. The pan did a great job searing a big, thick ribeye steak. Okay, I've been cooking in this baking steel number 10 for a little over a month now. I really like it, getting great performance with eggs. You saw those sliding around. Searing steaks, it does a great job. I also note again that with that three millimeter thickness and in this 10 inch size, I didn't get any warping issues on my induction burner. So I think that's important for people who have electric or induction flat top stoves. This might be a good choice. Also along those lines, if you're looking for a 10 inch carbon steel skillet with that good debouillé cooking performance with an oven safe stainless steel handle. Really, there are not many other choices. This is the way to go. Debouillé doesn't make the Mineral B Pro in this size conveniently. So I think this baking steel fills that gap in the Debouillé lineup really well. So the baking steel, number 10, carbon steel skillet, great pan, I give it a thumbs up. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave your compliments below. If you have complaints, take those on down the road. Thank you for watching. Check out the shopping links. Check out the links below. Leave your feedback. See you again next time on Uncle Scott's